Hey everybody, Nate Tice here from the Athletic Football Show, back again with another edition of Wind the Clock. This week, going to be looking at the Bears defense. Yes, the Chicago Bears defense that have been playing like a top 10 unit since the Montez Sweat trade. Going against this Lions offense this past week. A Lions offense that I've highlighted several times on these breakdowns because I really like what Ben Johnson and that Lions coaching staff does. But this week, the Bears, especially on third down, which is usually the Lions kind of thing, the Bears got after him. Really nice communication on the back end from the Bears defensive backs. So let's hop right into it. There's a couple third down plays to look at. Let's see what the Bears did. So the first example is third and 10, the first quarter. The Lions like to use a lot of bunch and stack formations with motion into and out of them to create leverage advantages and miscommunication from the defense. So bunches and stacks would be a receiver here with a receiver right next to him. That would be a stack. Now, if you added a third, that would be a bunch. And we'll see on this one that the Lions will motion Khalif Raymond next to Josh Reynolds to create a stack formation at the snap of the ball. The Bears on their side of the ball are playing man coverage. They are bringing a blitz with a hot dropper. I'll explain what that is in a minute. But there is one kind of funny little pre-snap little tell that there are man coverages. You see Tyreek Stevenson here running across the formation to then guard his receiver assignment because the Lions are in a one by three formation, which means one tight end and three wide receivers right here at the bottom of the screen. So the Bears defense wants to stay in like bodies, which means Jalen Johnson, a corner, will stay in man coverage on Khalif Raymond. Kyler Gordon, a corner, will stay in man coverage on Josh Reynolds. And then Tyreek Stevenson, who is hurrying on over, will be in man coverage on Amon Ross A. Brown. And even though that the Bears are in a kind of too high situation here, this safety, Jaquan Brisker, is actually man coverage on a tight end, Sam Laporta here, because again, defenses like to stay with like body. So safety on tight end, receiver corner, receiver corner, receiver corner. Now the blitz that the Bears bring will be Edwards off the edge here, Edmonds through the A gap. Uh, David Montgomery for the Lions actually does a great job in protection here. And they'll be dropping this defensive tackle to Marcus Walker as a hot dropper. And what that is, is trying to catch Jared Goff or the quarterback into feeling hot, feeling pressured. Maybe there's a protection bust. Maybe they don't have an answer in protection. And he goes into a likely lane that a quarterback might throw. Maybe catch the offense running across a route. There's a defensive tackle underneath. He gets a pick. We all laugh. Big defensive tackle, get an interception. It actually happened in this building at Soldier Field, BJ Raji in the 2010 NFC Championship game against the Packers. And I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a positive Bears uh, Bears video, but uh, that it did happen on a hot dropper, just like in that example I just drew up. So what the Bears did, and this is the good thing. Sorry about that. Sorry about that detour into the bad pass. But what the Bears did is watch Coward Gordon here sprint up to the top. So he is a man coverage on Reynolds, right? Now watch him notice Khalif Raymond's motion here. Now, the Lions are, again, going to be creating that stack. Reynolds is going to have a curl route. Khalif Raymond is going to have an over. Amon Ross St. Brown is going to have a flat. Sam Laporte is going to have a crosser, working across. And again, Montgomery is going to be in protection right there. You see Raymond's route? That big over route with motion to generate a little bit of speed and leverage. That signal that Gordon's given when he sees Raymond in motion, that is top hat technique. This is something defenses do. It's a pretty universal term in football. I was a quarterback. I, I just wasn't tough enough to play defense. Even I know what top hat technique is because when I would go against defenses, uh, the coaches and the players, we would notice what techniques that defenses play when they were playing against stacks and bunches. So here, this top hat technique has a purpose. So as opposed to Johnson right here, trying to run with Khalif Raymond all the way across the formation with no inside help. Remember that hot dropper is going to be right, right around this area. So he's trying to run all the way over there with outside leverage against a guy that runs a 4-4. This top hat technique will change the man assignments from this to now, Kyler Gordon will have the off ball player and Johnson will have the on-ball player, Josh Reynolds. So that's called a top hat technique or a top hat adjustment that defenses will use. So you see Gordon tapping his head. Everyone kind of uses the same signal. At the snap of the ball, you'll see the benefit of the Bears using this type of defense and how it leads to a golf sack because he has to hold on to the ball. So there's a snap of the ball. There is all the lines trying to mess with the leverage or trying to work inside, switch release, 
Um, in week one, I did a breakdown of the Rams offense on third down using the same type of release, same type of motion to create some consternation from the Seahawks defense successfully, I might add. So as the play goes, there is Gordon catching essentially Raymond because that is his man assignment. There is Johnson on Reynolds ready to catch him because now he is just, he has distance from this guy that's playing on the ball and that guy Reynolds has to work through some traffic. So he has plenty of time to kind of adjust after the quick snap of the ball. And there is Stevenson running with St. Brown in the flat. So you see all of them working in man coverage. Again, a little bit of collision there, but it works, slows them down. There's the hot dropper taking away the crosser. Goff holds on the ball, ends up in the sack. So in the end zone view, there's Stevenson running across the formation. Get into his main assignment. There is the motion from Goff. And I want you to watch Goff's eyes at the snap of the ball or after the snap of the ball. So he's peeking for Raymond and probably looks down a little bit to maybe see if he can get the Laporta on that crosser and ends up just running out of time because Yannick Ngakwe over here wins on the sack. So see him giving the motion. There's the step. Again, Montgomery does a great job in protection here to pick up Edmonds. But you can see there's Goff's eyes. He's waiting for something to cross his face, something to pop open. And when it doesn't, he uh, comes down and plays over. So that's the effect of getting a little bit of pressure, maybe an unusual pressure, getting that hot dropper out there as well. And just great communication on the back end. Coverage working with the pass rush to create a sack on a key third down. So we'll go to the next play where the Bears used a different technique on third down against the same type of formation, same type of motion to get off the field and create another positive play for the Bears. So it's the third and 11 in the third quarter. It's a tie ball game. Once again, I said same formation, same motion. There it is. One tight end, three wide receivers, one by three. And then here comes Khalif Raymond in motion to create a stack with the slot once again. This time, instead of a man coverage look, the Bears are going to be showing a pressure up front, just like they kind of did last time, but also a quarter shell. And you can see how the corner Stevenson is not traveling over to the three wide receiver side over here. So this is a good little man zone tell or pressure man zone tell. So, okay, we got that pressure look. We got a quarter shell. And sure enough, the Bears are going to be running a cover four quarters. Cover four is interchangeable in football parlance. But this time, even with Gordon pressed again on the slot, different slot player this time, they're going to be zoning it off. This might be because it's Jameson Williams in there at the slot instead of Josh Reynolds. Jameson Williams a lot more speed. So maybe you don't want to put him in man coverage and create these stack sets where he can beat us over the top. Jameson Williams is very, 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 very fast. And so is Khalif Raymond. You know, a lot of well, actually surprising amount of speed for this Lions offense. So when Raymond starts his motion here, you are going to see the Bears players communicating. Watch them all give them different little hand signals as that motion starts going. You see Johnson doing a little bit of stuff right there. But there's the motion. See? Signaling, signaling. And there you're going to see Jackson right there. He's making a little square. He's making a little Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction. You know, don't be a square man. But what they're doing and what technique he is signaling, they're all signaling. Because you even see Gordon signal a little something at the snap just to make sure they are playing box technique. And what box technique is, is these four are going to be working together. Because they are not bringing a pressure. These linebackers are actually working back in coverage. Edwards is going to be essentially on the running back, Jameer Gibbs. He's essentially going to be locked on Laporta, the tight end. But these four are going to be working in conjunction together to combat these three receivers and make sure they're all on the same page. So Edmonds is going to drop back here, and he has first inside. Whatever route comes inside first, that is his assignment. Kyler Gordon has first to the flat, first outside. Johnson has first deep outside. And Jackson has first deep inside. So they're creating a square here. That's how you can kind of look at it. They're covering these four areas. They are boxing it. They're playing box technique here. They're squaring it off. Don't be a square man. But here the Bears are okay in being a square. And as games go along in the NFL, coaches and players will look at past iterations in the same situations. Okay, in that last third and extra long, that last third and 10, they did this type of coverage. They brought this blitz. So you can see here, the Lions were kind of going to use a play to either beat, if it was top hat again, Khalif Raymond's going to go in motion and then work back out 
but also a way to overwhelm that box technique by putting three players into one side. They're gonna have a flood concept. Raymond's gonna work here and then work back to the flat. Jameson Williams, remember very, very fast, is gonna run a high, 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 high corner. And then Amon Ross Knight Brown's gonna work underneath and run a sail route, a middle corner. So they're creating a flood there. Remember I said it was a square defense with first inside. So this could overwhelm a box technique coverage, but Jackson does a good job here of playing it and I'll let it all play out. So you see them communicate. There is Gordon taking Raymond as he works back into the flat. There is Johnson waiting to catch anything that comes outside. And then Jackson does a good job of staying on top and rather just floating and staying inside he works with the high corner as well. Now, because all the three of those routes are working out, Edmonds does a nice job of identifying that and then works back to help out against any route combination that's coming from the boundary. So when Goff, who actually does a decent job of recognizing that, hey, they got pretty good technique over there, he works to the backside dick. This backside safety is coming to help also. If anything does break inside, he will grab anything that goes vertical from that field side. So Edmonds, See, starts working back as golf starts working back and ends up making a great play and helping squeeze that throw and creating a completion. And the Bears again get off the field on third and long. I'll show it one more time from the end zone view just to watch golf's eyes. Again, there's the motion. Motion starts, snap the ball. There's Edmonds working back, looking for anything to come inside when nothing does. You see his eyes following golf's eyes. So when Goff works to the backside dig, he helps squeeze it, ends up being an incompletion, and the Bears again get off the field. I hinted it at the top of the show, but this Bears defense has been playing like a top 10 unit since acquiring Montez Sweat entering week nine. They're seventh in defensive success rate, ninth in EPA per play, eighth in yards per play, sixth in the amount of QB hits they've generated, second in explosive play rate allowed, and first in explosive pass rate allowed. This defense has been playing very good. Um, all three levels as well. Sweat on the front end has definitely helped their young players emerge. Their linebackers are actually pretty decent. They, of course, signed Edmund and Edwards, but Jack Sanborn's a fine player in his own right. And like we've seen in this video, their defensive backs are communicating at a very high level. It's been really cool to watch all these young players like Kyler Gordon come along as a plus positive starter, as well as their other young players. And Guys like Jalen Johnson, who was a holdover from a previous regime, but under Matt Eberflus, and now that Phil Snow has joined the staff, this defense has been playing like a, a good one, a very good one. And I'm very excited to watch this unit the rest of the way and, you know, peak the offense a little bit with Justin Fields throwing the ball at DJ Moore, because that's pretty fun as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this week's Wind the Clock. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Athletic Football Show YouTube channel. I'll be breaking something down every single week from the NFL offense, defense, Still haven't gotten that special teams play yet, but the Ravens punt return touchdown almost got it at the end of the game. But thank you guys again for joining me. I'll see you guys next time.